I'm Kale Brock, I'm 31 years old and I'm from Adelaide, South Australia, which is the least famous surf town in the world, because it's not a surf town at all. <laughs> yeah, so I actually grew up uh, in a place with no surf, so literally you walk down the beach from my house and it's flat, never waves. Sometimes, maybe like six or 12 times a year, we'd get waves about 15 minutes away. Other than that, it was at least a 45 minute drive for some surf or an hour and a half drive for proper surf. And even then it was pretty terrible. So it was a pretty rough upbringing when it comes to like frequency of waves. <laughs> I'd always surfed from the age of 10, but then I'd gone off on this tangent and was, you know, a, a journalist and presenting on TV and doing a bunch of different stuff. And I was too scared to turn surfing into work. There was always a little bit of the pull, the allure of surfing and going, oh, I could surf as, as a job, it'd be amazing. But anything that I'd done in the past where it became a job, I stopped enjoying, you know? So I thought, I don't want to do that to surfing because it's very precious to me. But in the end, I finally read a book called The 4-Hour Workweek by Tim Ferriss. <laughs> and it, in that, it described how whatever you're an expert in, or whatever you are better than most people at is a potential product or a potential service or business. Uh, and I thought, okay, well maybe I'll give this, give this a crack. And I started an original channel with a friend called How To Rip. Uh, and we did that, we sort of half-heartedly did that for a couple of years. And then I'm, I was making my films on the side and doing my other work. And then right before COVID kicked off, I ended up just saying, I think I need to do this full time. I just really just want to surf. I'm sick of everything else. I'm tired of spending all this money on making movies. Like, I just want to surf. And first month in, it just took off straight away. And it's been a fun three years since then of just enjoying that momentum. And I think with the technique stuff, it's always been an interest of mine because when, you know, even three years ago, my surfing was, I don't think that advanced and there were a lot of stuff that I had to improve and I feel like by teaching people it's been the fastest way to improve my own surfing because now I can look at my surfing with a more critical eye and through articulating principles of surfing and technique of surfing I've been able to reverse engineer and correct some of my own issues with surfing so there's always been that personal motivation for me and then once I actually got into coaching and started running retreats and stuff it's one of the most fulfilling and exciting parts of my work. Being in the pool or being in the Maldives with a bunch of my clients and seeing them improve in a session or over a week and seeing them reach those new progression heights is always, it's more exciting than my own surfing, for sure. Like I'll sit out in the water and scream and cheer and, and to be honest, at the end of the day, that's why I do it. I think the most obvious and the best way to improve your surfing if you can't actually get in the water is to surf skate. It's the exact same movements, pretty much, as you perform in the water, and you can do it with repetition over and over again on the concrete. Especially if you use a structured sort of format. I'm not trying to promote anything, but when I do my, my ultimate surf skate program and I teach that, it's a much more structured approach. It's not just rolling around the streets surf skating, it's literally creating waves with cones or whatever, and then going through those waves and working on your technique, and I think that is a really good way to improve your surfing uh, in a very short amount of time and without actually getting in the ocean. Surfing on a yoga mat in your living room is the silliest thing you can ever do. And everyone's on Instagram <laughs> demonstrating, <laughs> demonstrating surf technique on a surfboard on a cushion or a, a BOSU ball. It's just pointless. It just don't even bother. <laughs> it's a waste of time. Um, if I didn't surf and I had to choose between snowboarding and being a race car driver, I think I'd choose snowboarding because it sounds safer. I don't know if it actually is, but, and it's probably a little bit cooler. I'm not going to lie, I have no idea what's happening in the World Cup. I only got told last night that Australia is still in it. I have zero interest in ball sports. I played footy growing up, AFL. I stop, I'm just not interested anymore. <laughs> I just surf and I don't even watch the surfing anymore. I don't know, I just spend so much time surfing and hanging out with cool people. I have zero time to like watch sport. I barely watch TV anymore. Like it's just, I'm such a one track mind. Like you brought up snowboarding before. I'd never snowboarded in my life. 
I don't want to try because I'm too scared to get injured because then it would affect my surfing. Like I'm just, all I care about is surfing. And then if I want to start something new, I'll generally do something intellectual. Like I want to learn piano, I'm learning French and that sort of stuff. Whereas I don't want anything to get in the way of surfing. <laughs> My favorite Moroccan food is probably the tagines we've been having. Like, and I remember having one when I first came here. It was like camel and plum, camel and dates or camel and plum or something. And it was out of this world. So I'm still waiting to get a repeat of that particular dish. I think that's the one. <laughs> and the waves, if the waves are on the menu far out, it's, it's been an incredible buffet. <laughs> it's been so good here, insane. Thanks for watching guys, my name's Kyle. You can check me out on um, Instagram or YouTube at Kyle's Broccoli or at thesurfersroadmap.com.